Hello, in this video we're going to see how to calculate the area and volume of a component of a visual arch object. Specifically, these layers of this travertine wall from the Barcelona Pavilion by Mies van der Rohe. Then we'll see how to display this information in measurement tables. These tables can only show information that is directly assigned to the objects. For example, in the case of a wall, we can list the volume, the area, the length, and so on. But we can't list the information of the components of this wall, such as the thickness of a specific component, its area, or its volume. So now we'll see how to achieve this. To do this, we'll use custom parameters, whose values can be displayed from this icon here. So we'll need to create a new custom parameter and assign it the corresponding value. These custom parameters can be created from a document. If we go to the Rhino options, in Document Properties, we have this parameter section where we can add a new parameter and then, from this panel, assign the corresponding value to each wall. In this case, we're going to do it using a grasshopper definition that's available on Food for Rhino, which will help us perform this calculation and also assign the calculated values to each wall. You can find this definition on Food for Rhino, but if you go to the Visual Arch website, then to Downloads, Utilities, you'll find it under this link. On Food for Rhino, you need to log in with your Rhino account. And then here you can download this resource, which is a grasshopper definition. Let's go back to the model. The first thing we're going to do is give these components a specific name so that the grasshopper definition can identify their geometry and assign the corresponding value to their area and volume. So I select this wall, go to the wall properties, click on this more button, and select the style properties. Here, I can expand to see the number of layers or components of this wall. And for the first and third components, which are the ones we selected earlier, we're going to name them Traverton by assigning the label Traverton to these specific parts. All right, let's close this dialog. And now we can open that definition in Grasshopper. So I open Grasshopper. I open this definition. And without going into detail about how it's created, here we first see these components that will help us assign the calculated volume value of these components to each of the objects that have a component with a specific name. And we can specify this specific name in this field. We double click here, and we can name this Traverton. So now, this definition recognizes all those walls that have a style component, a wall layer called Traverton. And on one hand, from here we're going to create a new custom parameter, and with these two components, we'll have this custom parameter within the document and assign the calculated value to each wall. To do this, we'll need to click on these buttons. It might be necessary before pressing this button, to right-click to refresh all the objects referenced within Grasshopper. Now I can close Grasshopper, and if I select one of these walls under the Parameters panel, I can see the two new parameters that were created from Grasshopper with their respective calculated values, which are obviously going to be different for each wall. Alright, now let's see how to list these values in a table. So first I'm going to open the Tables dialog. I'm going to bring this over here. And from here, we can add new table styles. But first, let's create this style. I'm going to right-click on this icon to open the Table Styles dialog, where in this case we can see some styles that have already been created, even for, well, listing walls or individual walls. Well, in this case, we're going to create a new one. Let's call it Travertina Walls. I click Next, 
and specify which type of object I want to list, in this case, walls. And here we have to select which fields we want to display in this table. In this wizard, we only see the native properties of Visual ARQ objects. Custom parameters don't appear here, but we can add them later. In this case, I'm going to select the Style Property field. I click Next. Here we have the option to group all the objects by one of those fields, in this case Style, although I'm going to choose not to. And we finish this wizard to have the new style created. Now, if we expand this list of property fields, we see the only one we've created. But from this button, we can add new fields. We're going to name this first one Travertino Volume. And under the Source tab, we're going to assign the corresponding property or parameter. At the very end, we should see this custom parameter that we just created. Under the Total tab, we can specify if we want to see the total sum of the Traverton volume for all the walls. And now we can duplicate this field to do the same for the area. Here, we should specify that the parameter to display is the Traverton area. We say OK. And now we can add this table. We select this new table style. Here, we can specify that it should be a dynamic table, so any new walls of this style will be displayed automatically. And now we have our list of walls with the volume and area of Traverton for those that have a component with this name. Tables allow us to apply filters, so we can hide any styles that are not Traverton wall. It's important to keep in mind that these values calculated in Grasshopper as custom parameters are not dynamic, meaning they won't update if we change the length of this wall. For example, if we select it, we can see that this wall corresponds to this one here, and we're going to change its length. We see that both the volume and the area remain the same. To update these values, we'll need to run the Grasshopper definition again. I right-click to reference all the objects again. Click Update Property. I repeat the process for the area as well. And now, when I close, we might need to exit this panel and go back in to see the refreshed values. And here we can see how it has updated to the new value for this wall, which we can always check from this parameter section as well. I hope you found this interesting, and if you have any questions, you can leave a comment on this video. Thank you very much.